friends over that time. Um, Jeff was wrongly convicted uh, at the age of 17. And one thing that really hits home for me is we're just about the same age. So when, when it says that he was wrongly convicted from the age of 17 to 33, I always think, man, I, I remember what I did between 17 and 33, and this guy was locked up. The thing that has really struck me getting to know Jeff over the years uh, is, is how kind and decent and compassionate this man is. Um, he's generous with his time, and he works tirelessly to help other people. And I, I don't know how I would feel if I had been in his position, but you know, this summer he was uh, remarking on you know the fact that he's not bitter because he doesn't want to spend the rest of his life uh, ruining it by being bitter over something that he can't change anymore. Um, and, and so that that really struck me. Um, so when we came up with uh, these awards and he was nominated. Um, his work with the Jeffrey Deskovic Foundation and with California, it could happen to you, uh, really stood out as, as reasons to award him uh, with our Justice Award uh, for the Wrong and Convicted. Thank you very much. Wow, kind of surreal to be here. So a couple quick things. Um, I know it's hot, so I won't be long, but I do have a few important things to, uh, to, to say. Uh, firstly, uh, my wrongful conviction for murder and rape, which David alluded to, which happened despite a pretrial negative DNA test result, was caused by a coerced false confession, uh, fraud by the medical examiner, terrible public defender, and prosecutorial misconduct. I lost seven appeals. I got turned down for parole because I maintained my innocence rather than expressing remorse and taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I was exonerated through further DNA testing via the DNA data bank, which not only reaffirmed the prior negative result, but also identified the actual perpetrator, whose DNA was only in that data bank because left free while I was doing time for his crime, he killed a second victim three and a half years later, a school teacher who had uh, two children. So really, wrongful conviction and prosecutorial misconduct, while you send the wrong person to prison, you know, that's a tragedy, and of course, you, you send them, you send their family. But in a larger sense, as important as those points are, you also leave society in danger. So in a larger way, it's a public safety issue. Yes. So the Jeffrey Dustman Foundation for Justice, which I started using some of the compensation that I received, you know, our mission is to free wrongfully convicted people and to pursue policy changes aimed at preventing what happened to me from happening to others. So we have been able to free 11 wrongfully convicted people. Yeah. We've been able to help pass three laws aimed at preventing wrongful conviction. And within the coalition group, which I'm an advisory board member of, and which the foundation is part of, we were able to pass an additional uh, five laws. Yes. This award from the Davis Vanguard is important to me for a number of reasons. First of all, let's note in general that while the Vanguard seeks to expose injustices, in contrast to that, the general order of the day is that prejudicial pre-trial coverage, in academic terms referred to as hue and cry, often sets the stage for wrongful convictions to happen. So here the Davis Vanguard, in contrast to that guilt presumptive perspective, is doing court watching in order to prevent prejudicial pre-trial coverage, in order to objectively report. Another reason why I like court watching is because it sends a message to the judges 
that the media is watching this one. So maybe we should be just a little bit less blatant. Why don't we just be a little bit more factual, actual, fair, just, because they're watching and it could get reported on. Speaking of reporting on it, while it's great to have coverage when an exoneration happens, and those are referred to by those of us in the innocence movement as learning moments, while that all has its place, the critical time period for the coverage is when the injustices are still afoot, while the wrongful convictions are still in progress and being maintained, and the Vanguard has thrown critical coverage on wrongful conviction cases while the injustices are still afoot. Uh, public education, the, pub the Vanguard educates the public on important justice issues. One small aspect of that is I don't know, has it been a couple of years now, the looking back columns in the Davis Vanguard, which are articles I've previously written, uh, those are ran by the Vanguard. Uh, policy issues, the, 